So once you've read and explored, um, let me just make sure, do I record? Yes, I think I'm recording, yes. Um, okay, so since um, we mentioned a little bit, you know, the motivation and um, please explore and read um, the aspects about, uh, you know, possible ways of relating sounds and, and, and visual aspects and uh, techniques which are uh, different from what we explored so far. Um, we combine this into the homework, uh, trying to create a very different atmosphere uh, for uh, a battle scene, or it could be danger, it could be a horror scene. Um, now, it, deliberately we're trying now to go and explore novel uh, composition methods. So we mentioned uh, atonal music or music that doesn't have tonality, serial music, random methods, clusters, uh, or sonority, that was the Ligeti example. Uh, Ligeti example also has this heterophony or micropolyphony, a lot of little voices moving together. We'll talk uh, in our next class this week about spectral music, Foley effects, uh, but I can mention them already here, um, since you can either explore forward a little bit of the reading materials uh, or um, um, kind of start, start just exploring uh, some of the techniques for yourself uh, and um, including um, some of the tools that I'm going to point to. So the idea was, uh, is uh, for this homework uh, to create again a description of a scene with some sense of feel and mood um, and also describe you know, the game situation. Instrumentation, if you choose different instruments, if you're using one of the tools that comes with a fixed instrument, just describe what it is. Come up with some sort of a description of the structure. Again, it's not going to be um, the same uh, four or eight bars that you did before. Uh, so one aspect that we cover is the idea of uh, building a musical form. Uh, is it something that basically just gives an atmosphere, it's something static, or is this kind of a musical gesture, something dynamic? Do you break this into sections and juxtapose it? Uh, since this is again a small exercise uh, meant to kind of explore a novel musical language in a very different uh, game setting, uh, I, you know, I don't expect you to be very elaborate on this thing, but just think about like what you do. Do you kind of create some movement forward or you create an atmosphere or you do something that kind of jumps between more than one uh, section? Um, explain your, your technique that you used uh, and uh, the choices. Um, now, optional is visual representation that fits the music. Uh, this is kind of a new method and uh, I will point to some of the additional tools. And here I'm kind of telling you, you may use algorithm tools such as this one, but uh, I will also provide links to additional, um, um, mostly web-based um, tools. And some of them allow you to paint your music or express this in a very abstract way. So why I'm a, uh, suggesting this part uh, because we spoke about the, the visual relations between sound uh, and uh, you know the cinematic expression and also the visual aspect of what's happening on the screen. Um, not one-to-one, -one, right? We don't really translate the image to a score and think about uh, painting things that um, uh, sound musical. I mean, this relation uh, it can be carried to a certain extent, but not too much. But if you think that the best way to describe the music is by kind of painting, some kind of as, as abstract expression of what you think the sound could be represented visually, and if this is a way for you to describe how it also relates to the scene, um, so like the spears and the sharp, uh, um, in Alexander Nevsky, the Prokofiev's piece example, where you had the, uh, really you know, sharp musical kind of uh, strings doing these kind of glisses, glissandis and sharp, sharp takes on melodies. 
uh, that might have corresponded to the sharp imagery or the low rumble that corresponded to this kind of like empty sky with this uh, army approaching. If, if this kind of visual representation and matching makes sense to you, you can just provide an abstract image that represents the music and then maybe talk about how that image uh, relates to maybe something visual in the game. Um, really, I mean, game, part of the idea really um, that uh, a lot of the theory of the 20th century was looking at was this abstract criteria. Like one, once you break away from conventions, you have to come up with some new ideas how to express yourself. Uh, and abstract art actually has a lot of kind of theory or at least you know, a lot of writing that try to explain and rationalize what you are supposed to feel and find in this music or in the abstract art uh, by breaking the conventions you are looking for something else so anyway you can kind of explore this aspect um, and in some games and we'll talk about uh, composers and games that use uh, experimental composition techniques in their games very fluently moving between different styles later on um, but now this is kind of your exercise for this week is to do something very different very abstract and link this to um, uh, the battle danger zone horror scene i mean my choice of, of, of the scene uh, maybe because a lot of the very abstract music sounds alien it had kind of naturally found its way into games and music and games and films more as uh, horror scenes or something which is a bit more of a detached uh, internal dark thing i don't want to claim that all abstract and contemporary music experimental music has to be related to horror or danger uh, but um i think it will be the most natural association right now to take something that has this, uh, you know, a big impact by throwing you outside of your uh, you know, sphere of, of uh, you know, the, the comfort uh, area and um, relate this to um, to a game situation. Okay, uh, so this is kind of my uh, uh, explanation of the motivation behind the composition and I will talk a little bit more about the actual tools uh, when I come back um, in an hour. Um, so I'll stop for questions and um, okay here we start.